My parents on a wealth retirement visa had used my name to get the visa. They settled in the UK in 2006 and until 2010, I believed their lies that they lived permanently in India. My GP, Dr. S said my parents visited in 2010 or 2011 and mentioned to him that I was born crazy. They asked the doctor to divulge my home address. I would starve to death in my boyfriend's home if they did not give me money, the alleged. And if they did not have my address, they would not be able to give me money which was to save my life, by preventing starvation. And my father had claimed that owing to my eternal mental illness, I was refusing the money. The GP said he had just asked my parents to leave. My doctor had said he had no control over Pembroke's attacks and was not responsible. Now my father jolly well knew my address when he asked my GP to give my address in violation of data protection, because it was to save my life. The frail and elderly gentleman was trying to draw attention. He had visited before, and my boyfriend had said he could not enter. We must respect and revere those born before us, and those precious, once-in-a-lifetime people who sowed their seed, or brought us into the world. The special, once-in-a-lifetime people who passed on their genes, and gave us our racial identity. No one can be a proper substitute for those two people, be they good, bad, or middling. Our parents can never be forgotten as long as we are alive. But my boyfriend or I were not completely in the wrong in denying senior Mr. K. V. entry, although it was disrespectful. It was a sad and grim situation. My father had been spreading rumors I was born crazy that my relationship with my boyfriend was bogus, and made a false missing person report, to draw attention. He pretended to an Indian constable I lived with my parents, in order to justify a missing person report. The constable of Thames Valley Police emailed me about this missing person report, like an email addressing a moron. He went on long leave immediately after, and could never be reached. I had overdosed in January 2011 after senior Mr. K. V. had threatened to break the door and force me to sign that he had power of attorney over my immigration matters. He had a lawyer who had a psychiatrist and they could grant me indefinite leave to remain in a twinkling as gravely disabled psychiatric patient. I had not cooperated. The details of this story are at the end of chapter 6 and need no repetition.